We're gonna take a moment to talk about quadratic relationships. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty about equations, graphs, and tables, quadratic relations are super common in the world around us. Anything that we see in motion, like a ball that you throw, a soccer ball when it's been kicked at the goal, a baseball when it's been hit by a batter, all of those objects will fly in a parabolic uh, direction, a parabolic motion. And a parabola is the graph of a quadratic relationship. So if you were to look at this graph right here, this would look an awful like, lot like the flight path of a ball that you threw up into the air. So when you're talking about uh, anything in physics, about uh, things flying, we're talking about quadratic relationships. And even quadratic relationships were mentioned in the, all throughout the movie, actually, uh, Hidden Figures, when if you think back about how they're trying to figure out how to get uh, John Glenn and his space capsule back into orbit, they just started talking about, well, all we have to do is change the ellipse into a parabola and calculate where the parabola will land. So any astrophysics thing starts with the idea of quadratic relationships. Now, if engineering and astrophysics isn't your thing, quadratic relationships are also um, in dealing with maximizing profit and pricing items for a retail store. So whether it's business or engineering or astrophysics, quadratic relationships are everywhere. And even you had a lab when you were talking about the stopping distance of objects in science where you found it was a quadratic relationship. So the stopping distance and speed have a quadratic relationship. So you really can't separate your everyday life with quadratic relationships. Now obviously you don't spend a whole lot of time calculating them, but through your experience of living, you've your brain has figured out a way to analyze quadratic relationships, whether it's figuring out how hard you have to brake in a car to where you need to run if you want to catch the ball. So let's start looking at the specifics of a quadratic relationship. A quadratic relationship in graphic form has a graph that is a parabola, and this shape is a parabola. Parabolas can open down, and this is a, an example of a parabola that is opening down. Parabolas can also open up, and on this graph right here, you have three examples of parabolas that are opening up. Now, when we're talking about parabolas, parabolas have important points. The important points of a parabola are the x-intercept or intercepts, as the case may be. So there can be two x-intercepts, as is the case here, as well as uh, the y-intercept. Now you will only have one y-intercept, and every quadratic relationship will have at least, or will have exactly one y-intercept. LOS stands for the line of symmetry. Parabolas are symmetrical. And finally, the vertex. Now the vertex can be referred to as the maximum or the minimum, and that's why we're gonna call it a vertex. And let's find the important points of this graph right here. So by far, the king of the important points is going to be the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts of this expression right here are where the graph crosses the x-axis. I should have done that in red if I'm going to stick with my color coding. So here we go. So now it's on fire. And these x-intercepts are at 0 and 5. So the x-intercepts the are 0 and 5. The y-intercept, well, it's possible that the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the same number. In this case, it is 0. The line of symmetry, well, the line of symmetry is occurring at the vertex. And that should, of course, be green. So I'll get rid of it. And now I'll color it in green. So the line of symmetry and you can see that the graph is symmetrical about this point. 
And that line of symmetry is occurring when x is equal to 2 and a half. And since it is a vertical line, and you'll remember that when we're talking about uh, vertical lines, the vertical lines will have the equation of x equals, in this case, 2.5. And finally, for your uh, vertex, this vertex is occurring at 2.5, but we don't know the y value, right? So if I was using Desmos, and I'll show you some Desmos in a little bit, um, you could just hover over that point. But since we're not using Desmos right now, what I, could, I would have to do is plug in 2.5 into the equation. Now I happen to know that the equation in this case is, is there we go, um, x times x minus 5. Now, you wouldn't have to derive that, but since I'm the one who typed in the graph, I know that. So then I could plug in 2.5 for each. So we'd have 2.5 times 2.5 minus 5, which is negative 2.5, which would give us a total of 6.25. And so the vertex is at 2.5 comma 6.25. All right, and so those are the important points, and you are expected to be able to identify the important points of a parabola definitely from the graph. Now, um, I will expect periods 1 and 7 to be able to get the important points from the equations, but that is going to be for tomorrow. Today we're just talking about generalities. All right, so synonyms for the x-intercepts, and really quadratic relationships, what we're really after are the x-intercepts. Synonyms for the x-intercepts are solutions or roots. So if I say, what are the roots of an equation? I'm looking for the x-intercepts. If I say, what is the solution to the quadratic expression? I'm looking for the x-intercepts. So how many different solutions can there be? Well, if I'm looking at these green graphs, do these green graphs cross the x-axis at all? No, they don't. They do not have x-intercepts. So therefore, they will have no real roots. And that's how you would say it, no real roots. If I look at the blue expressions, the blue parabolas, notice how they're touching at just one point right there at 0, 0. Since it's touching at the x-intercept at 0, 0 in one place, we know that there is exactly one real root. Finally, the most common example is when you have a parabola that's crossing the x-intercept twice, and that would have two real roots. Now here's the trick on the real. It is possible to find imaginary solutions. And so we're saying two real roots, one real root, and zero real roots, so that we are differentiating from the imaginary roots. And there's a whole branch of mathematics called imaginary mathematics, and we're going to talk about that next week. I I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's, it's actually kind of neat. So we can have three different options for how many solutions there are. Now, when we look at a quadratic table, and I have a quadratic table right here, the way to tell if you have a quadratic table is if you have a constant second difference. So in our table, the graph starts at 2 and goes up to 3, 5, 8, 12, 17, 23. Notice how the difference is increasing every time. So the difference from 2 to 3 is 1, the difference of 3 to 5 is 2, 5 to 8 is 3, and so on. And the difference between 1 and 2 is 1. The difference between 2 and 3 is 1. 3 and 4 is 1. Now, the, const the second difference doesn't have, to have, doesn't have to be 1, but the second difference has to be constant every time. And if you have a table where you have a constant second difference, you know you have a quadratic relationship. Now, when you study quadratic relationships in terms of mathematics, not the application in science, 
you're going to spend most of your time dealing with quadratic relationships in its e uh, equation form. And that can get a little bit tricky, as, as most of you remember. Now, there are two different, three different ways, but really two major ways that you will be looking at quadratic expressions. Expanded form and factored form are by far the most common. Expanded form simply means that it's simplified fully. You, you cannot multiply anything together. Every piece is, there's nothing more you can do with it. And so expanded form is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, each piece of this polynomial, poly meaning many, nomial meaning term, this happens to be a trinomial because there are three terms, has a name. The quadratic term is this ax squared part. This is what makes the parabola and this is what makes something quadratic. In expanded form, if you do not have a squared as the largest exponent, you do not have a quadratic relationship. So. The quadratic term is the ax squared piece. That has to exist for you to have a problem. This middle term, this bx, is referred to as the linear term. And it's called the linear term because if you were to graph just b times x, you'd get a line, linear. The constant term, the c value, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a constant. It does not change. And that constant value happens to also be the y-intercept. Probably misspelled, but whatever. The last thing that we can talk about in the expanded form is you can get the line of symmetry, the equation of the line of symmetry from the expanded form. And we know it's a vertical line, so we're gonna have x is equal to negative b over 2a. So if you take this b value, take the opposite of the b value and divide it by two times this a value, you will get this vertical line that defines the line of symmetry. Well, if you have the x value of the vertex, which is on the line of symmetry, then all you have to do is plug in your x value in for x, and you'll get the y value, and you can find your vertex. Now, the factored form is a little trickier. The factored form is going to be broken into two separate factors. Um, it's either, most commonly, you'll see the x plus a number times x plus a number, and those will be in parentheses. But sometimes, when you, have the, when you do have a greatest common monomial, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, you'll have an x times a x plus something in parentheses. And it is necessary to have a factored form expression in order to solve a quadratic function. So to find these x-intercepts, you must have your expression in factored form if you're going to solve it by factoring foreshadowing till for next week. Finally, in vertex form, and we didn't spend any hardly any time on this, in vertex form you have a or y is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Well what does this mean? Well the vertex in vertex form is h comma k. So it's the opposite of this value inside the parentheses, and it is the value that you're adding or subtracting on the outside. Now the a value controls the width of the parabola. So I would like to show you something really cool. So I'm gonna head over to Desmos. And um, how do I scroll my screen over? So here's the thing. If I change my a value, this is what happens. If my, so I'm starting with an a value of one and I'm sliding this a value to the right, so I'm making it bigger. As the a value gets bigger, the parabola gets narrower. As the a value gets back to one, if, I, if it, we have an a value that is between zero and one, notice how the parabola gets wider. When I get to zero, well, I just get a straight line there's my straight line. But then when a is negative, that's how I get a parabola that opens down. So this a value controls whether the parabola opens up or down, whether there's a maximum or a minimum, and how wide it gets. If I change the b value, as the b increases, I slide the parabola to the right. As b decreases, I slide it to the left. 
and the C value works the same way. It'll slide it up and down. So as C gets smaller, it'll go down. As C gets bigger, it will go up. All right, so that's kind of a cool thing. All right, so finally, the biggest part of uh, what you learned this year in quadratics is how to go from factored to expanded, and more to the point, how to go from expanded to factored. How do you factor an expression? So in, to, if you have a factored form expression and you need to expand it, this is just the rainbow and smiley faces or, or foil if you prefer. And so you have to multiply everything in the first binomial times everything in the second binomial. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Combine the similar terms. Negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x. We have no other squares and we have no other constants. So by distributing, we're able to take a factored form expression and turn it into expanded. Going the other way is far more challenging and we're gonna save that for tomorrow. Oh, finally, a parabola is a function because it does pass the vertical line test. In other words, for every x value, there is one and exactly one y value that satisfies any particular x value. All right, good luck.